There's game day two, group B, battle between Panama and Uruguay. Well, Uruguay, Uruguay rolled to a big win, 99 to 78 in the first qualifier of this window. And because of that, they have that one win there in the standings. Panama currently at the bottom, but uh, the participation point with what they're missing, uh, if they do uh, get a win, obviously they would leapfrog Paraguay, and depending on the, the result tonight, could even go above Uruguay. But as it is, uh, they are searching for their first win, and knowing that three teams from the group will advance to the FIBA America Cup, maybe they will get the win tonight. Maybe I think uh, having watched Paraguay play, they're going to have a, they're going to have a hard time making to the FIBA America Cup, and Panama will ha Panama will have a couple of games against them as well. So that is uh, down. Those are battles down the road as it is right now. You play who's in front of you. Uruguay, meanwhile. Uh, could join uh, Brazil up at the top again if they get a, another win tonight. So Jason Granger running out onto the court. Great to see him back with Uruguay. And mem remember uh, Bruno Fittipaldo had the outstanding game uh, the other night with the 28 points. Uruguay, despite being in hostile territory, will like their chances of, of getting another W tonight. So their, their players have been introduced, and now the players of Panama. Just looking back at the at the last, if you look back at the last FIBA America, uh, and you know that Argentina beat Brazil in that thrilling final, 75 to 73. Uh, you did have Panama taking part and Uruguay, and they both finished 10th and 11th overall. Uruguay were 10th, Panama were 11th. So they are looking to uh, put on the show tonight, get back to the America Cup, and again, they will be hoping that this year, uh, this time next year, they will, they will know uh, what the situation is, that they will actually be participating in the America Cup, which is going to be held in Nicaragua. We're going to have a pause now for the playing of the national anthems.
Well, great hearing those national anthems here before tip off. National team basketball and coach is the Argentinian coach, in fact, of Panama. You used to always see him over there on the bench when Argentina's national team played. He was an assistant, Gonzalo Garcia. Great to see him getting an opportunity to, to lead a national team. And he went up and hugged his adversary tonight before the game. Uh, Gerardo Jowry. Yowry, excuse me. Jorge Vasquez, Carlos Velez, and Kevin Lee from Puerto Rico, Colombia, Canada are the referees for tonight's game. Well, 2015 Panama came in seventh and Uruguay eighth. And that was the best finish for Panama in the recent FIBA Americas. But again, they've got to make it this time, and so does uh, Uruguay. Uruguay off to a good start. Here is their starting five tonight Bruno Fittipaldo, Emiliano Ceres, Jason Granger, Carol Washman, and Martin Rojas with Pamoli, Gut, Ducas, Ubal. Rodriguez, Gomez, and Iglesias coming off the bench. Always fun to watch Augustin, Augustin Ubal and Coach Jauri, the Gerardo Jauri, ready to get this thing moving once again. Should be no secrets between these two teams for all the times they've played over the years and also the fact that they did just play. And for Panama tonight, starting five is going to be, wait for it, Ricardo Lindo, Trevor Gaskins, the veteran, Eric Romero, Tony Bishop Jr., and Carlos Rodriguez, Sanchez Quintero, Ayarza, Rivas, Atencio, Bocas, and Carter all coming off the bench. And again, there's Gonzalo Garcia, the head coach of Panama. In that 99-78 win, it was just a, a gradual buildup for Uruguay leading 23 to 17 at the end of one. They took the lead pretty much for good, about three minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first half, getting a three pointer. And they went on to lead by as many as 27 points. Turnovers were a real problem in that game for Panama. They coughed it up 21 times. And with that, they were punished to the tune of 27 points for Uruguay. So you gotta look after the ball a little bit better tonight if you wanna have a chance of, of winning, of beating a good Uruguay team. Somos locales. And uh, all these nice signs in here pregame. So Bishop. Gaskins, Fittipaldo, again, probably the, I would suggest he and Granger, the marquee names in this, in this game, as well as Gaskins. Gaskins hit, has hit a lot of big shots over the years. Trevor Gaskins has been at this a long time. Well, we are underway as Uruguay wearing the blue attack in the basket to the left on your screen. Remember, they won the opening game at the beginning of the window. So trying to beat Panama for the second time. Washman goes down, gets up. Fittipaldo dribbles back to the right, gets it down low, and Washman goes up. And it takes kind of a difficult hook shot from just inside or kind of a push shot, hook shot from front of the lane, kind of forced it up there. 
Vasquez takes his first attempt. The 34 year old misses. Now Fittipaldo. Granger. For the longest time, a really le a leading player in Spain. He misses there. Granger had 22 points on opening. Opening night. Excuse me, I misspoke earlier. Bruno Fittipaldo with 22. And here is the three-pointer. That's no good. Fittipaldo launching it from downtown. Pass whipped to the corner and driving in and laying it up and in is Tony Bishop Jr. Panama has that little extra spark tonight being at home. And that three pointer from the corner is good from Uruguay's number 10, Emiliano Ceres. Now three attempt, trying to get it right back. Does not go for Carlos Rodriguez. Fittipaldo has it knocked away. Here's Bishop. And then they turn it right back over and now the pass and can you believe Sedas misses the layup on the break? So a break for Panama. Bishop left wide open. Doesn't want the J. Lindo gets it back over to Romero for three. Eric Romero. Had nine points in the first meeting. Now oh, good defense. Romero trying to knock it away to get the steal. 24 years of age. Should be part of this Panama team for a long time. And again, the hands up on defense. Lindo comes up with the basketball. Bishop powers his way up. And Panama looking confident right now. Fittipaldo fights his way to get past the defense, Rodriguez to get open and Gaskins having words with the younger Romero. Washman sets the pick. Here's Granger. Whipped to the corner. Bishop had to follow through. Martin Rojas, you saw him kind of jerk like that with the, the Panamanian reaching in, trying to get the attention of the referee. Here's Fittipaldo into the corner. Ceres walks the tightrope. And Rojas missing and back over to Panama. That's well, a little frustrating for Uruguay, especially considering they had setters going in for the dunk. The wide open layup and he missed. Kira Washman goes out of the game. Gonzalo Iglesias enters the contest for the first time.
Lindo for three. Ball falls to Bishop. Passes right back outside to Lindo. High arcing three. This time it's good. He just needed to put a couple up there before he could find his range. Granger explodes to the basket. Now plays back at home in Uruguay with Pinyol. Now the turnover. Fittipaldo has it. Granger had a great career in Spain, that's for sure. Played Euroleague, played Liga Endesa. This was Lindo knocking down the three pointer. Granger looking healthy, looking sprite, sprightly, and misses. 10 to 5, Panama. Great start for the home team today. Bishop gets it out to the other corner and the miss from Rodriguez. Lindo gets it back and then throws it away. from Gonzalo Iglesias. And both teams putting up some threes, but I like how Panama's moving the ball around. Oh, that's a charge. Yeah, Carlos Rodriguez. Good job drawing the charge. Granger. Yeah, that's just textbook defense. Touch pass out to the corner. So Cedas hit the early shot, but has uh, been struggling ever since a little bit. So Amilcar Sanchez checks in for Lindo. Where's number seven? Still out in the wing in front of his coach right now. Entry pass, good quick hands from Granger, knock it out. Good basketball, whipping it inside to Romero, but Granger was alert. And what I like about what Panama is doing right now is that they are not getting stagnant. They are constantly passing, keeping the ball moving. Again. Uh, just off the bench, he gets it up. But Sanchez misses. Peter Paul's pass gets away. Oh no, look at that set. It picks it up. And out of a broken play. He gets his second basket, and Uruguay now has seven points, still trailing. That's uh, missing everything.
stays in the sand. Well, it's kind of a slow start, sluggish start offensively. Howdy bringing in the reinforcements. Augustine Ubal has checked in and also Juan Ducas, who wears number five. In fact, it's uh, not Ubal yet, it's Ducas. And Joaquin Rodriguez, number 14. to the corner. Gosh, missing badly again. Oh, Gaskins. Sanchez. Gaskins. Both, both teams getting the, the looks. That they want, they're just not making them. And well, there's one that's been made. Juan Ducasse. Juan Ducasse with the uh, the bucket. We've got a tie game. Pass pass into the hands. Uh, Rodriguez, he gets it up to Granger. Uruguay now in front. Fama overdue for a bucket here. Eugenio Bocas to the corner and ends up being Gaskins that ties it up. His first two points of the game. Uruguay with the last possession, most likely, of this quarter. And they get it off just in the nick of time. So, even Steven, 12-12 at the end of one between Panama and Uruguay. Just two threes for each. Not a good percentage at this stage, but both teams doing better inside the arc. But overall, it feels like open shots are there. They're just not making them. Here's a look back at the first quarter highlights. So Romero was able to strike from deep. And then Linda. So that was it for the three pointers for them. This was when Panama thought they were going the other way for a bucket. Ended up turning it over and giving up two points. Granger catching ahead on the break. Gaskins took him a while, but he finally got on the scoreboard. We'll scan in the barcode, and you can have Courtside 1891 in your phone, your smartphone, to get video streams, schedule scores, and more. Download the app, get it from the App Store or on Google Play, the Apple App Store or on Google Play. This game's moving right along into the second quarter. 
Panama. Looking to go back in front. Oh, good entry pass. Oh, and they're not going to count it. Foul before the shot. Carter in good position. Javier Carter. Thirty-two years of age, so foul. Misses the free throw. Takes his time and misses both. That's why Garcia was disappointed that his basket didn't count. The ball in the game as well, number eight. Here's the pass down low. Nice hesitation and a chance for a three point play. Rodriguez is making some good passes out there. He's already got three assists. So he does not complete the three point play. Comes, he's got to get rid of it. Good hands, reaching in, taking it away. The ball has it knocked out of his hands before he could shoot it. To Kesse, still smarting over that missed free throw. Shot is good. Gonzalo Iglesias. He's now five for Uruguay, trying to get a little cushion here before halftime. Still a long way to go before that. Here's Sanchez taking it deep. And that three doesn't go for Eugenio Bocaz. Ball dragged his foot. So that was the last three pointer, tickling the twine. Sanchez tried to use the bank. Yosemar Yarza is in the game as well now, the veteran number 10 for Panama. Three pointer for Uruguay is going to lead to a timeout. And that young man has looked about as good as anybody, Joaquin Rodriguez, making shots, getting his teammates involved. Already Panama on the back foot. Gonzalo Garcia is going to talk it over.
So that foul called at midcourt. Foul on Rodriguez. I like to spread the court. Gaskins drifts in, gets it to the corner, but they've got to start making some of these threes. And Carter, great job. Oh, they're going to call a charge. That's a tough break. He says, tell the guy not to flop. Pocas missing the three. Well, good one for Ducasse, taking one for the team. Sticking to Granger defensively. Oh boy, that was an easy foul to call on the Yarza. Thirty-six years of age now, Yosemar Yarza. directing the offense. Another three, and it's good in Uruguay. Showing their strength, Rodriguez, playing like an all-star. Lead is 11. Bocas drives in and gets the foul on Juan Ducasse. So Gaskins sagged, left him open, says, sorry, coach, that's my mistake. Oh, Eugenio Bacaz finally gets his first point of all the players on the court right now, in fact. He's the only one that has a point. He makes both attempts. Panama scrambling a little bit in the backcourt. Again, trying to keep some pressure. Does it get any easier with Fittipaldo back out there? The guard play has been good. Here's Rodriguez again. Oh, behind the back pass, a little bit of panache. And Fittipaldo hands it off. Oh, beautiful basketball to Casse. Missing that. Look at this. Great block of Yarza. Now let's see if that creates an opportunity. Yarza can't get the pass from Carlos Rodriguez. Linda coming back in. Look at this man right here. Behind the back. Showtime. Uruguay are passing it well. They're hitting the shots. I've always thought they've kind of underachieved because whenever they play, they play so well. The Uruguayans. Ooh. Rodriguez gets it back. Dumps it to Iglesias. He misses. Now the crowd urging Panama on. Sanchez, good explosive play. Trying to get a foul. Does he get any love from the ref now? Keep the ball moving.
That, that was your ball missing. Oh, nice drive. And with that, Eric Romero will go to the line. down at this end after making the free throws. Look how hard Rodriguez works. He's being chased by Sanchez. He's very active. Oh, set us back in, goes up. Oh boy, that was a beautiful finish. Romero's pass batted out of bounds. Granger back in. Blue ball's going out. Also, for the first time, Justin Quintero's in the game, number eight for Panama. Here he is on the wing, the right wing. And Panama's Rodriguez drives and gets fouled. Free throw shoots get better for Panama. It's keeping them in the game right now, trailing by nine points. I mean, this guy, Rodriguez, is just plays with a certain intensity that it's uh, hard to keep up with him for the Panama players. Look at that, the interception, and look who it is. Rodriguez and he hands it off a great hustle back but Uruguay score set us and Rodriguez does so many things and he's even helping his teammates off the court great example for the young man Uruguay look like a team that has a certain determination about them right now like they're they're tired tired of messing around and want to fulfill that potential not just get to the tournament, but really be the best versions of themselves. Thank you. 
What's painful about that is it comes off of a turnover. But again, number 14 is just working. You know, working on defense, his quickness, his awareness. Really seems to be stepping up. Joaquin Rodriguez with uh, four assists already to go with his eight points. Nice. Yeah, that was a good play. Bishop, Bishop with the putback. Six points for Bishop. Bounce pass did not get kicked. They keep him playing, and there is a thunderous dunk from Romero. And Panama bringing some juice to the arena. I thought they might call a kick. They did not. The teams head over to the bench. Uruguay called timeout. But much like Uruguay look like they're tired of messing around, Panama, they look a little sharper tonight than I, uh, last time that I watched them play. I'm, let's see if they can uh, build on this uh, little run here. Get it back to nine. Seeing the alley oop dunk hang on the rim just a little bit for emphasis. And this is what they want to do. They want to get out, play with a little bit of uh, vim and vigor. Play with, play with some energy because Uruguay is bringing the energy themselves. Got to fight fire with fire. Linda switches off. Now they get the shot from the corner. Rodriguez misses. Romero hands it off. Here's Gas. I mean, here's Bishop. Bishop gets in. And Romero with the rebound. Look at that. Good sharing of the basketball. Bishop. <laughs> Enjoying the moment. Telling the crowd to get up. No, no, no. Romero, that's off the backboard. You can't block it once it's gone off the backboard. So Ducasse gets credit for the bucket. Gotta have better court awareness than that. Rodriguez bringing the ball up the floor. Uh, Gaskins gets a breather. Bishop puts it up from the stripe. But there's no, no movement, no cutting there, trying to, to get something going to the basket, trying to make the Uruguay defense work. That's the problem that I've got with that shot.
Look at the long rebound too far away from Fittipaldo. Now Romero's an exciting talent, that's for sure. They called offensive foul on Linda. Turnovers already for Panama. And Linda reaching in, knocking it out of Granger's hands. Final minute of the first half, Fittipaldo. Baller missing the shot, getting his first minutes. Lindo from deep. Look at the hustle from Bishop. But still enough time for Uruguay to, to get the last shot here. Granger. Gets rejected. Great play, Lindo. He saw exactly what was coming and he said, not in my house. Even so, a frustrating little period for Panama. They're playing hard, but they're trailing Uruguay 33 to 24 at halftime. Five threes for Uruguay to just two for Panama. Three more makes inside the York. Panama having some success getting to the line and making free throws. And Panama, look at the effort there. 22 rebounds to 15 for Uruguay. But Uruguay do have those five steals. So Bishop Jr. with eight, Romero seven, Lindo three. For Panama, Ducasse. Ducasse leading the way for Uruguay. Joaquin Rodriguez also eight points, four assists. Look back at the highlights. a game, but you can't leave him open. Just wide open. Just inviting him to take it, so he punishes you. And then he's on the other side punishing you. That was Gaskins because he dropped off. And that was the Ducasse finishes this off. Good, just good movement all the way around, starting with the behind the back pass. Then the pass to Fittipaldo, who dribble drives and gets it to Ducasse. This is the high energy play that Panama were needing. Eric Romero. The 
So we are at halftime, 33-24, Uruguay on top of Panama. Education, health, justice. We sometimes take these simple things for granted. They're not common for all of us. We are all born on the same planet, but not with the same opportunities. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are one. We are all on the same team. Let's convince those who never thought they would do it, that they can. We can. Together, we are stronger. No matter your origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. Still six to shoot, but he heaves it from near center court to Bastian Herrera. A rush a blood to the head. Everyone's a little too big on the inside. Galvani gives it up. Down the lane for the throwdown. Mark to the highlight reel, assist. Oh boy, Vanilla again. Mark Antero has to be disappointed with his start. And look at Solano taking off. Didn't take him long to get his first. Making things happen. There he is. Finding the short roll, and again, that's just great basketball from Uruguay. Martin Rojas with the pass, Ceres with the finish. Oh, baby! The Agra Falls is just flooded here at St. Catharines. Khalifa Young just elevating. from Campasso, the Nola pass from Campasso, and the shot from Campasso, bang! The one-man show. Oh boy, oh my goodness. Ramsey. Look at that. build up, we said that backcourt for Uruguay is the elevation from Romero. Where did that come from?
Inside the arena, Roberto Duran, and it is uh, Uruguay on top of Panama, 33-24. Uruguay winning the first game against Panama. Panama coming here determined, uh, but so far still trailing. You know, they fall behind. And uh, we look at the top score for Uruguay, and it is... We're going to highlight Sedis with his nine points. Also, Juan de Cass. That's him shooting it right there. This was Sedis picking it up. The broken play going in and scoring. Kind of rolling, spinning to the basket. And he really ran the floor well there, didn't he? And Bishop is uh, leading the way for Panama tonight. Eight points, four of nine from the floor. Born in Dallas, Texas. Played uh, some college basketball at Texas State. He's 34 years old now. He'd like to win something with Panama before it's all said and done. Zero roll to another big win today. I mean, they're just overpowered Potter White. So, in this group, I think it's going to be difficult for Paraguay. I mean, depending on how sharp, how focused Panama are, but it looks like Uruguay are just laser focused right now. been kind of a, a sea change, so to speak. Venezuela losing against Colombia. Chile beating Argentina. So you got in Group A uh, four teams with one and one records. Um, and it's interesting in Group C, you got Canada, Dominican Republic, and Mexico. Three teams that played at the World Cup last year. So they made the 32-team World Cup and Nicaragua. Now, Nicaragua, as the hosts, would take that spot, one of the three spots, which means the other three are battling for just two, two of the spots. So there's going to be a good team that doesn't go to the America out of that three. And then you've also got the fascinating Group D, where Puerto Rico, USA, Cuba and Bahamas are all one-on-one. -on -one. We all know how good the Bahamas are because they're going to be at the FIBA Olympic Qualifying Tournament after winning the pre-Olympic Qualifying Tournament last summer in Argentina. Now, that team had Eric Gordon. It had DeAndre Aiden. It had Buddy Hill. This team did not, yet they, in this window, yet they did beat Puerto Rico in Puerto Rico. So, you know, a lot maybe a lot more balance and you better you better keep improving as a national team program and put some time into it or else you're not going to have a chance nice music thank you very much indeed 
And, it, and again, it looks like Brazil, excuse me, it looks like Uruguay had really come out. And, you know, they're intent on, on proving that as a basketball nation, they can get it done. I remember when they tried to qualify for the Tokyo Olympics and they had a couple of heartbreaking defeats playing at the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament in Vancouver. They've got players, and now they've got Rodriguez, who's growing up a little bit. Granger looks really good. He's healthy. Obviously, Fittipaldo is a leading player, and solid, outstanding player in Spain with Lenovo Tenerife. Then to Casse and um, Cetis. And, you know, they've got the makings of a good, good team. And to be good, you got to have not just five players. you got to go all the way one through ten. And Panama, meanwhile, I think they've got some things to be excited about. I mean, Romero is an outstanding talent. He's playing professionally in Mexico, just 24 years of age. And you just hope that you can harness all of the, all of the talent, all of the skills, Get him to play as a team. Yeah, that's the main thing. Scanning the barcode to get courtside at 1891 in your smartphone. For the schedule, score, streams, download it on the Apple App Store or get it on Google Play. So you can watch all the great international basketball. The FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament is coming up this summer. You'll want to watch those. Amongst other things. second half here in the Roberto Duran hands of stone stadium that's what he was called hands of stone and that is unbelievable Lindo trying to get the ball to Gaskins and that is so frustrating you get a chance to run come out determined and just an unforced turnover. And you are immediately punished with the layup by Rojas. And then he steps out of bounds. Trying to save it, Carlos Rodriguez. So an inauspicious beginning for Panama. A couple of turnovers. Granger. Oh boy. Everybody steps over to guard Cedes. That's why I don't like giving up the baseline. He is 13. Gaskins. There you go. Make those shots. It's a 10 point game. Uh, Matthias Calfani, I wonder what he's doing now for Uruguay. 
to the ball to bounce pass. Beautiful. Rojas again. Here's Bishop steps back, puts it up. Another chance to only fumble that one out of bounds. That would really make the coach's hair turn gray. Lindo to Bishop. Back outside. Rodriguez drives in, hands it off to Lindo. Granger trying to bully ball his way down on the low block on Gaskins. Look at the just no look bounce pass. And Martin Rojas is a just a, a gamer. I mean, you look at him, and you're like, doesn't seem to be a special athlete. But he knows where to be at the right time. Fourteen points advantage. Bishop. And looks like uh, Granger may have caught some Bishop in the face a little bit. Oh. Well, he was kind of reaching in, slapping down hard on the basketball. That's kind of. Makes you wonder how that foul is not called before the shooting fell because that was obvious. But then again, maybe that was part of it in the continuation. So Bishop is at the line. Look at this right here. Wow. Oh my gosh. I mean, he really got him on the leg, didn't even come close to the ball. Nine points for Bishop. I think it's going to be hard to press this team with uh, the type of players they have. You got to remember Rodriguez is going to come back in. I mean, look how good Rojas is and how clinical this offense is. If you're wearing a hat, you just have to tip it. And compare that to just settling for a long jump shot. Garcia's asking for a timeout. And this time Ceres, and again, the well-oiled machine that is the Uruguayan national team running smoothly as Uruguay go up by 17 points. Pero vamos a forzar un poquito más. 
Well, the Panama mascot jumping is uh, trying to get the fans jumping in their seats. But this, what impresses me about Uruguay again, of the many things, is it just looks so sharp. Like they've been practicing for weeks. They, they really do look like, you know, they've been in training camp for a long time. And obviously they haven't. This is a window when the players leave their clubs and they come and join the team. Gaskins drives in, tough finish. And that's an interesting development. Maybe uh, Garcia thinks Gaskins has a favorable matchup or he can get him into favorable matchups. Technical foul on Bishop. Now, what did he say? Now, they'll get a break. catch. Sanchez back in the game for Panama. Here's Granger for three. No, nope. long rebound. They got a chance to run if they go now. Gaskins looks up the floor and bit up Aldo takes it right away from him. Painful, painful turnovers. That's just dribbling into trouble. I mean, you just got to be aware. And there's no need. You don't have to dribble all that way. You just pass it. Get rid of the basketball. There's Gaskins. Another turnover. Now he hustles. Gets on the hardwood at least. He's not trying to make mistakes. It's just uh, they're painful when he makes them. And... Uh, Bishop thought he'd say, well, they can use a head coach's challenge. Here it is again. Very close. So Bishops is down. Here's something from his coach, Garcia. You're going missing right now, so you got the chance to come back. Bocas back in the game. There he is making the pass. Romero hands it off. Carlos Rodriguez. Bocas. Sanchez. down, passes it to Bocas. Sanchez pushed by Rojas. That's a good strong take and a good call.
And Rojas is fouled again. For the part of telling his teammate, hey, pipe down. He's made the call, just get on with it. We're up 17 points. So, Rodriguez back in the game. Carlos Rodriguez has it knocked out of his hands. Quick pass right down the lane. Wow, good casse. There's something to watch. He can the game now, 19 points. Ducasse has 11. Sanchez drives in, stays with it. It's not, it's not an issue of Panama playing hard, which I, I've seen an improvement in that respect, it feels like, under Coach Garcia. Uh, it's decision-making, and they're, fa they're, they're facing a team that, like I said, is playing like a world of machine. This is not making mistakes in their movements. They're running great sets. They've got great guards like Fittipaldo. Cannot adopt this. The world is against us mentality right now. They've got to put that behind them and they've got to lock in defensively, move. And they've got to call the switches if they're switching, whatever they want to do, but they've got to, they've got to stay with their men because they are giving up some wide open drives. So these are, America's these are the qualifiers for the FIBA Mayor Cup. It's going to be played in Nicaragua next year. And this is better. Great block. Wow. Javier Carter met at the rim by Ducasse, who's been terrific. Augustine Ubal into the paint. Kondo whistled for the foul. Bocas. Spanish top flight right now is Zendo Palencia, who are the uh, bottom team, looking at potentially uh, most likely relegation. Talking about Ubal. Good pass inside. Carter gets it to go this time. No rim protection. No, no, he didn't get there this time in time. Carter 
was able to get it quickly. Now they've found Fittipaldo and he's back on the line. Ubal is only 20, so he also has a still has a bright future. Uh, that's better for Lutzkando. It's a 21 point deficit though. It just doesn't feel like there's any opening for them to get steals. Look at the bat. Look at that. And when they get in, they're not missing shots. Who ball with the reverse layup. Gaskins. Nice pass again. Rodriguez, look at him. Oh, behind the back pass. Wow. This is just a, like a, a symphony. They are beautiful to watch, the Uruguayans. And you can see the frustration mounting for Panama. But again, it helps to have Fittipaldo. Oh, look at that. Snuck in behind Rodriguez. And Uruguay really turning it on now, 60 to 34. Final seconds ticking off the clock in the third quarter. It's going to take a miracle for Panama now, the way this game has gone. There's probably no way back, to be honest, because they're only getting stronger. Look at that. And when they get open layups, they score. I think the phrase putting on a clinic applies for Uruguay right now because they are beautiful to watch. 62 to 34, Uruguay tearing apart Panama. And the one thing that doesn't show up in these numbers is how they're moving. And they're moving without the ball, they're running they're just running them, uh, running them ragged. That's how guys like Rojas are getting open so often. You know, somebody moves, somebody else cuts to the basket. If you just rely on jump shots, you're just not going to beat this team. Look at this. For the ball, they're always ready to make the extra pass. And they really don't miss too much. Granted, it's easier to make shots when you're on top and you're playing well. Missing. I mean, that's just a beautiful finish from Augustine Ubal. Scanning that barcode if you want to get stats and more from the America Cup qualifiers.
So it's just not the same type of movement in this Panama team that you see. There's Lindo, Ricky Lindo going up for the basketball. Joaquin Rodriguez. Oh. Well read defensively that time. And the foul on Joaquin. A rare mistake by him to throw it away. Final quarter, it's all Uruguay. Behind the back pass, card for three. Joaquin launches. Good pass down low to Carter. He waits, goes up, and dunks it home this time. Blue ball. Still involved with the program. And it's going to stay. Possession, but with eight minutes remaining and down, you got to see a concerted effort here. Oh boy, this is the bounce. Boy, what a bullet pass that was! Then no gets the block, and there is Lindo giving the fans something to cheer about. That was Jamal Levy over there on the bench. The former Panamanian player. 62-38, Uruguay on top of Panama timeout. Well, they have been able to Punished Panama for their turnovers. They've got great shots, 40 points in the paint, 29 points from the bench. I mean, just all the categories point to Uruguay being just convincing winners tonight. And Linda getting that dunk. It takes off, but just not quite as emphatic, just not quite as special when you're getting beat by, you know, 24 points. It's not good enough just to come out and get the highlight real plays. You just have to continuing on every possession 
wear opponents down with good solid offenses where everybody's involved. Here they are running another offense. Rodriguez for three. Gaskins drives in. Oh, look at that, the switch comes. And a rare turnover for Yugi, uh, Uruguay. Gaskins on the break. Granger. Rodriguez flicks it over and another wide open three. Iglesias. Okay, so they gave him two. He's uh, clearly done a great job with his team. Bishop spinning, turning, scoring. Under six minutes to go, so Uruguay close to improving to 2-0. Rodriguez fouled by Bishop in the corner. The coach's expression says it all, really. Bishop, I think, just maybe just got himself ejected. Looks like he maybe threw something or hit somebody. I think the rest might have to go have a look at this on the monitor. So they're going to get the players to go back over to the benches, and the refs are going to go have a review. They're going to huddle up first. Hmm, it's curious. So what the refs do is they first say, okay, what did you guys see? Here's what I saw. And then like, okay, well, let's go see if we can confirm it on video. Boxing out Rodriguez is what it was. And so he got tangled up with Rodriguez. When he's boxing out.
just it depends on how they interpret. I think it looked worse in live action than maybe it was. Unsportsman like foul. So they call a foul on Ducasse. So unsportsmanlike on John Ducasse. I guess it was for sneaking, kind of like getting his arms locked in there. Without letting it go, and Bishop misses both free throws. Well, it's been that kind of night for Panama, that's for sure. Even when you have like a little bit of an opportunity. And they come away with no points. Could have been a five point trip down the floor. They got nothing. Good okay, block again by Lindo. That was clearly an alley oop attempt. At least I thought it was. Here's Granger. Look at the pass. Good rim protection. Just picks up the loose ball, goes up and scores. After the Justin Quintero miss. Pass to the corner. Oh. And Uruguay player goes down. And uh, goes back, and Romero scores and has a chance for a three point play. Augustin Ubal whistle for the foul. Rodriguez returns for Granger. Romero makes the free throw, so it's a 23 point game. Rodriguez fresh off the bench, missing. And we'll see if Panama can make this a little more respectable. Good pass to Lindo from Bishop.
So Bishop goes out and Garcia's gonna get some more playing time. For Gil Atencio. Free throws, that's the foul on the ball. Point deficit. Still not enough time for any type of comeback. It's all about making it look more respectable. Go up big on Dominican Republic. Well, 15 points late in the second quarter, trying to win that one, having lost the first one in the Dominican Republic. Oh, beautiful handoff, Rodriguez. For the first time, Pablo Rivas, number 13. And a foul. So just under one and a half minutes remaining before Uruguay improved to 2-0 and and join Brazil up at the top. Rodriguez missing. The option, the, the thing is, the option can't just be to stop and pull up and shoot a jumper. And that's, and again, this is where Uruguay haven't done this at all tonight. They have constantly moved and gotten good shots. Oh boy, that was a telegraph pass. 
And Rivas gets his first points with a steal and a dunk. Here's Rodriguez, gets it right back with the three. And, oh, and Lendo goes up and misses the dunk. That'll look pass. Rodriguez again. And Uruguay just kind of dribble it out. I'd be surprised if they shot it. So that's it. The game is probably similar in scoreline at least to the first meeting. 77-55 Uruguay win over Panama. They beat him twice in the qualifying. Together, don't they? It's like a, I said it's like a well oiled machine, but it's, you know, everybody's cutting, passing, moving. It just looks like a, a thing of beauty. 50% inside the arc for Panama, but look at that. Eight threes, five more threes made by Uruguay. And Rodriguez was just terrific all night. 18 points, eight assists. So back to the drawing board for Panama. They just have a lot of work to do, and you know you have limited time to do it unless it's in a, a training camp during the summer. So, here's a look back at the highlights, and when it was all said and done, you go back to the very beginning of the game, about nine minutes into the game, in fact, it was 10-10, and then it was 12-12 early in the second quarter. And uh, Uruguay went on an 11-0 run to kind of establish control. And they were in control the rest of the way. They got more than half their points in the paint. More than half their points coming from the bench. So again, just kind of illustrates that this is a good, deep team. So they will, they will continue with the qualifiers in November as we look at the final plays. And Panama are going to have next up, they'll be at Paraguay on November 21st. I mean, that goes without saying that's must win for them. Paraguay becomes the team they have to beat. And they can. You know, but you get to the America Cup, you want to have some success, which means you got a lot of hard work to do to try to get better and better. And then they will face Brazil 
So they would travel to Brazil then for the second game. Panama would then be at home against Paraguay and Brazil in the last window. So here are the standings. And big win for Brazil again. Big win for Uruguay. Brazil and Uruguay up at the top at 2-0. And, oh, and uh, already getting a very good idea that those two teams will be at the FIBA America Cup. And then it's between Panama and Paraguay most likely uh, for that third spot. So the fans came in hoping tonight Panama might get a win. Uh, but Uruguay, Uruguay once again just far too strong. They win it 77-55. Thanks for watching, everybody.